Yeah. The disposal, well, you have the Kurds, of course, in Iran, Iraq. And Henry Kissinger's famous statement when we were winding that one down, and the Shah said, it's not my problem, you've got to deal with them. And Kissinger recommended the Congress that we let them go. He said that uh, covert action is not to be confused with missionary work. Mm -hmm. So essentially, the Kurds were just dropped and slaughtered. And, and slaughtered. Yeah. John, John, let's talk about uh, uh, El Salvador. Now, you you said at the start of the program that that was going to be the next big big place of contention. What has happened there that's different? It's it's uh, it's returned to the same. And New York Times, International Herald Tribune are writing repeated articles saying that the level of violence and dispute and instability in the country is back to where it was in 1982 when it was about to go down the tubes it was it was all it was breaking the country could have gone a revolution could have happened and the US began putting in uh, massive shipments that eventually became 3.3 billion dollars worth of military aid uh, these big newspapers are sort of warning the establishment that that's where we are right now today counting the number of attacks on military camps by the so-called rebels in the capital, you know, in the last month. And elections are coming up in which uh, there's every appearance that the Arena Party will win, which is the right wing, you know, Dobby Sun's original creation. And uh, this, this is a situation where I think Bush is really desperate. I think, you know, his Vaseline principle, putting the covert back in it, I don't think he wants a showdown in El Salvador right now. He wants to sell this goodness for a while longer and keep things quiet until he's got his credibility up. But one thing that I said in England that I fear very much is the reason he and the media that supports him are working so hard on this goodness image is so that when he puts U.S. troops into El Salvador to keep it from going down the tubes, he'll be able to say, I'm a good guy, but, you know, I had to. Or to put it another way, He's faced with a dire challenge uh, to his, his first real test there. If the country comes apart, if it starts to go, if the revolution starts to really succeed, the oligarchy is already uh, back to the 82 position of decapitalization, of taking their money out uh, in case it blows so they won't be caught with it in the San Salvador banks. If it goes, then he's going to have to either, one, put U.S. Marines in there at just a point in history where the Soviets are pulling theirs out of Afghanistan. Right. And uh, the world's not going to like that. And the people in the U.S. aren't going to like that. Or he's going to take historical credit for, quote, letting El Salvador go down the tubes, as, as Carter was blamed, for example, for, for Iran and Nicaragua. And uh, he's not going to want to do that. He's not going to be comfortable, uh, you know, the conservative uh, element of his being and his, his presidency. They're not going to be happy to let a revolution actually happen in El Salvador. I see them as utterly desperate right now trying to work out some kind of a compromise and keep the lid on. Well, how can they do that if the rebel forces are about to win a military uh, battle? Is there a possibility of negotiating a, a settlement? This is one thing that the Bush-Reagan forces just haven't done. They have always used the big stick. I mean, covert secret wars has been their uh, method. And well, you, no you notice in El Salvador, and this is just mm -hmm. in the last few weeks, the rebels proposed to participate in the elections yeah. if the elections can be put back six months so they'll have time to realistically. And Duarte immediately said, no, absolutely not. That would be unconstitutional. No way. And Bush, uh, his White House, said, well, slow down. Maybe we can find a so way. So you think they may be forced to negotiate for the first time? Or face a, a, a desperate decision, mm. one that could be a, be a Bay of Pigs kind of a humiliation for George mm. Bush in the early days of his presidency. But it's another state of chaos right now in El Salvador. Mm. Is it not? not only are the rebel forces winning victories, but the death squads, from what I read, are also back into play. So that in the city, you have these right-wing uh, death squads um, carrying out wholesale assassinations. And Bush's options are pretty limited. The Arena Party, it appears, is going to win. Mm -hmm. uh, if they do, their, their inclination to violence, of course, is, is well known, and they're all already into violence. Uh, the Congress is in a mood to cut off their military aid if the violence level goes up to a point beyond which they can no longer ignore it. And, uh, but if you cut away the military aid, then you don't have any carrot, as they put it, to induce them to behave themselves. 
So the problem is, as, as they are threatening, is that, well, in that case, you know, there would be no reason for us to restrain our soldiers, and a great bloodbath might ensue. So El Salvador, as, as a result uh, of, uh, in part, of our meddling in policies and support of creation, originally in the 60s, of the death squads, and in support of them through today, is faced with a real uh, terrible threat of, of a major upheaval like like occurred in the 30s. Where Another the, bloodbath where you the oligarchy, slaughter on... Where the oligarchy got together in the 30s and said, we're going to have to kill 30,000 people to keep the lid on things. And that's about where they are right now. And that's what they did. And that's what they did. John, there was uh, an, another occurrence of a... Uh, socialist government pulling out of a neighbor. Uh, we mentioned it briefly before, Cambodia. Uh, when the Pol Pot regime was there and just murdering people by the millions, the Vietnamese went in and stabilized the country and put in a government. Then the United States and the Chinese su uh, supported Pol Pot.